the Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com. All right, welcome into the Sports Renegades here on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stupprich. I'm Ryan Risky. And uh, yes, we were off for the last two weeks. Uh, we had little vacation time. Uh, so we're back at it now this week. And there was um, a good amount of stuff that happened while we were gone. Uh, most importantly, the the most um, at least the the most exciting thing sports wise to happen while we were going on was the All Star Game, uh, including the Home Run Derby and the All Star Game. And two Cubs were in the Home Run Derby, and although they didn't do pretty well, it was still nice to see them in. Yeah, I think I think Rizzo would have done better if he wasn't the very first guy that went. Yeah, I agree with that too. I I think he had what eight home runs, and then Josh Donaldson only beat him by one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Uh, um, it was pretty good. Um, I mean, I like the new format. I think we all liked. The, I think everyone loved the, the new, new format. format of having uh, four minutes. It was originally five, but they were afraid of of the the rain and stuff, which never happened uh, during the, the 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 home run derby. But uh, they they tried to cut it down to to four minutes because uh, I think it was originally five. Yeah, they did in the weather. I, it, it was really good because you didn't. Have, no one was just taking pitches to take. You know, waiting for that really good one where sometimes they're letting pitches go they could have hit out. Right. Uh, and obviously the winner was Todd Frazier, which was good to see for Cincinnati anyway. Um, and Todd Frazier's a good guy anyway, and he's a really good baseball player. And uh, I kind of like his home runs too because he doesn't really, uh, you know, hit them high or, or, or go very deep necessarily. But he hits these nice line drives and his... Uh, his coolest ones are the the line drives into center field, which I which are just jacked out. You know that was kind of one of the issue. The one things that hurt Chris Bryant was he was losing like time on all of his home runs because he was hitting oh, yeah. them so high. There was one that that he hit extremely high. I don't even. I mean, it barely made it into the outfield. It was a moonshot. It, it it just kept going up, and yeah, that probably wasted a good ten seconds. Yeah, I mean, I mean that that's when you you want to call your timeout. The moment you hit it, timeout, so you don't have to waste those ten seconds. I mean, it, it was a really, really good idea because remember, last year was one of the worst home run derbies I'd ever seen. Right, I think a lot of that was. I don't think there was that many good people who participated in I mean, it last year. But Stanton was in it, except the seven Stanton outs. Stanton was in it. Yeah, the the seven outs was just absolute nonsense. Like. You'd you'd have you'd start out at three outs and then you'd be in desperation mode where you should never be like that, right? And uh, Todd Frazier, um, who did Todd Frazier beat again? It, it was uh, Todd Frazier beat I, Jock I, I, Peterson. Okay, it was Jock Peterson. Yeah, uh, that was, was a really like, exciting final. It was like unbelievable. How, like th- this set a record for the amount of home runs that were hit. Right. I think in the the first two rounds alone they they had already topped the uh total from La- last year there was just from a, last year. Yeah, last yeah. year there was a whopping 73. Right. And this the, year there was like 180. Yep, they they definitely uh broke the record which was exciting. And I mean and of course who doesn't want to see home runs? It was very cool. Um and then of course the the two Cubs that were in it uh with Rizzo and Bryant and well they, they didn't do horrible. They they both kind of finished uh towards the the bottom of the totals. Yeah, they didn't do bad, especially considering they were they were first time uh, players. Yeah, yeah, it's the first time uh, that they were both in a professional home run derby. I think uh, Bryant won the Triple A home run. Yeah, derby he was last in the Triple A All Star stuff and everything. But yeah, uh, and then also Tuesday night there was the All Star game. Which uh, got, I think this was the first time in a long time that the All Star game had much. Uh, worse ratings than the home run derby. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it was exciting right off the bat with the the Trout leadoff home run, which is pretty cool. Because I mean, I, because I mean, who doesn't like Mike Trout? But uh, I mean, it was kind of disappointing because normally I root for the National League. I'm sure you do too, because the the Cubs are in the National League. But um, you know, of course, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things who wins the All Star game. But it was uh, exciting to to see a lot of offense and Andrew McCutcheon's home run. God, that was just massacred. A complete yeah, that bomb. was a nice home run. Same with Brian Dozier's off of Mark Melanson. Right, right. Yeah, I was yeah that was a nice home yeah, run. Yeah, I was disappointed with the way the National League ended up playing. I mean, I thought they 
played a much worse than they should have. I, I thought they they I, I thought they would have scored more runs, and they they had some chances towards the uh, the ends of the innings. I think they got a run or two towards the end, but um, yeah, they had yeah. I thought Bryant's ball in the ninth inning was going to get out. Yeah, yeah, he definitely hit it hard, uh, just uh, not deep enough. I, of course, he hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark, pretty much, which. Uh, it sometimes nice happens. Hit. Yeah, yeah, it was a nice hit. It would have been gone and left or right, that's for sure. But uh, he had it to right center and didn't quite get out. No, no. I mean, yeah, I mean, they said this is the first home run derby since, like, 2010 or 2008 that had three home runs in it. Yeah, uh, I I think you're right about that. I don't remember seeing a whole lot of home runs. I I know that there's a lot of runs with these American League players just keep rounding the bases. But, uh, yeah, there hasn't been a lot of home runs in All-Star games. It was nice to see um, a couple really good ones and I mean, then a couple bombs with Dozier and McCutcheon. People want to see some runs in the All-Star game where now right. it's in the pitching has been taking over. Right, and, and of course, you know, it was surprising. The the guy who uh, who screwed it up pretty much for the National League was Kershaw when he was out there, which was – Sort of upsetting to see because he's been really good since June. Yeah, yeah, and he didn't pitch terrible. There was just some hits that found, like softer hits that found a hole. Right, uh, and then um, Johnny Peralta got the first RBI for the National League, which was upsetting because it was right after Rizzo. I think. Yeah, I thought. I, thought I think that's I, when Rizzo flew out or something. Yeah, he grounded out to first. I thought oh, for sure right. Rizzo was going to drive in the run there. Yeah, yeah, or or at least get hit by a pitch, right? But uh, he didn't do that either. Um, but I, I mean, it was nice to see that neither of them struck out, uh, because of course, uh, Anthony Rizzo was over two. He had a, a ground out and a fly out, yeah, a short fly out. Bryant had the, a very impressive walk against Dellen Batan says. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did because because <laughs> uh, he's one of the best relievers in the the whole game, and he. He uh, was able Long to pull and bad. a walk. I was, I was afraid, man. The, the thing about these All Star games is. You know, it's not like the NHL or the NBA or the NFL or any of these other sports where, you know, it, no one doesn't care. Everyone cares, and the problem is the players, the National League players, have nev- really never see these American League pitchers, and the American League hitters never see the National League, or the American League hitters never see National League pitchers. So you really don't know what you're doing, especially got, when there's guys like Batances and Sale and Kershaw. Right. Uh, it's, it's just like, I mean, you, you almost expect there to be a ton of strikeouts because these hitters have no idea what they're looking at. Like, they kept showing the dugout, the American League dugout, when Aroldis Chapman was pitching, and they were all cringing, like, yeah. happy that they weren't batting yeah, against him. exactly. And, it, yeah, of course, he was really impressive. Uh, he looked really good. I think almost... I. Like, almost all of his fastballs were over 100 miles an hour. Yeah, that'll be uh, exciting to to see for games to come for the Reds fans and him because he is really good. Unfortunately, the Reds aren't a very good team this year, but they do have a lot of good players. Uh, they just all haven't gelled together too well this year. No, and one thing that really kind of irritated me about this was the White Sox and Chris Sale. Yeah, I'm surprised that he didn't go in. I know that they didn't really want him to pitch, um, but I really wanted to see him. I mean, he's probably the second best guy in the American League. Yeah, well, I mean, okay. you know, it's either him or Archer. If you're the White Sox, there. tell me what, what what looks better. You go and complain to the media. You don't want Chris Sale pitching in the All Star game when everyone right. wants him to, and the American League wants him in so that he can help them get home field advantage right, in the and World it's only Series. you know it's only going to be for one inning now what what happened what looks better that or pushing chris sale start back to sunday and say you want to get him some extra rest before the first half ends right and then he's ineligible to pitch what looks better yeah, no, I I'm right I there mean, with you. I mean, come on, come on, Robin Ventura and Rick Hahn. And the thing is, he pro- like I mean, Max Scherzer. I mean, the Nationals didn't do that. They just had him pitch on Sunday. Right. If you don't want him to pitch, pitch him on Sunday. Don't pitch him on Saturday. Right. Because then you're. I mean, you have like three or four days there, and I mean, it really shouldn't be a big deal. Especially, you know, it's not like the Sox are in contention for anything. It's really not a big deal if Sale goes out there on you know a, you know a little under what his normal rest is to to pitch an inning, and so so the na- so the national audience can see him you know pitch. Uh, the, I, I don't understand. He should have been in that game. He he should have been, and I mean that's just another thing with uh, just 
like the everything about the White Sox is just awful. And I know that they they've been playing better as of late. They the even when the Cubs have a better team than the Sox, it seems like the Sox usually when like the the Cubs just don't play as well against them, and that's just how it is. And, right. And one thing that just kind of ir- really kind of made me mad was the Saturday game. I'm I'm sure you once I get to the point, you'll know what this is. Robin Ventura's pitching changes. And okay, yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, so they're winning five to. I'm one, aware of that. Yeah. Five to one, two outs in the ninth inning. So they take out David Robertson to bring in Zach Duke to face Chris Coughlin. <laughs> like really? You're taking out your closer, right? right and that was after Robertson. Did he get the, yeah, the first he, two the out? The first two guys, yeah. were, he got out. There's no one on base, so he brings in Zach Duke to face Chris Coughlin. I, I wonder if he thought that Robertson would give up another hit to Coughlin, or, uh, um, or at least would give up um, a line drive hit. Because I, I, um, if you remember Friday, Coughlin yeah. made the, the last out on a really hard hit ball. But um, well, it, I mean, it shouldn't through. even matter. They're up by four runs. With Maybe that outs. was his thinking, though. I I don't know. I, I mean, if he's thinking of that, he's got some some other issues. Like I mean, you're up by. It's not like it was a one run game and there's someone on base. Right. You were winning by four runs. The Cubs at the bottom of the order do up. No one. They weren't gonna tie it. And then Robin Ventura goes through a pitching change. I was at the game. We left in the eighth inning. We were just disgusted with the way. Oh, they I would have been too. And we were listening on the radio, and we we're just like, "What the hell is Robin Ventura doing?" There's no reason, especially when Zach Duke pitched on Friday, uh, pitched a hole in. There's no reason to bring him in again. Yeah, I'm. I'm just glad the Cubs were able to salvage a win and not get swept. Yeah, uh, I knew they weren't going to get swept. I, I knew that. I knew for sure they were going to win with Arietta. Pitching, I was just. Of course, well, he was, wants the distance too. Which yeah, I, I knew they were going to win when Arietta pitched. I was just kind of hoping Lester, you know, could you know almost do as good as Sale and then leave it up to the bullpen. And which I mean, I thought Lester pitched well. That the the uproar about Lester's performance after that game was unbelievable. Like people are complaining about him. Like, like he didn't pitch bad. He allowed two runs in the first inning, and then that got screwed over by poor defense. Yeah, I mean there were that there was a. I mean, I mean there, there's turned, been a lot of other games where Lester has been a lot worse than that. Yeah, I mean, I mean that ball, that grounder hit to Bryant. That should have been a double play. Instead, he threw it into the threw it to first uh, base, and it went into the seats. Like yeah, that, that was no. That good. should have just been a double play. I mean, that wasn't Lester's fault. And right. I mean, it, one thing, another thing that before we go to break that. The uproar of White Sox fans acting like they've won the World Series because they beat the Cubs two of three. Like, seriously, are you really... Was that the case on Saturday? Yeah, well, even on Friday, just scrolling through Twitter, White Sox fans are acting like their team is one of the best in the MLB. (laughs) Like, come on, come on. Well... Just just stop. I mean, they have a right to be happy, but they they certainly don't have a right to think that they're a good team. I mean, yeah, I mean... (laughs) It was ridiculous. Like, okay, you only won two of three. Stop acting like you actually won the World Series. Yeah. It, it, I was just like, come on. Is this as, as low as you guys have come? Like, you're, you're acting like you won that. Like, when the Cubs swept the White Sox, there wasn't, and no one was acting like that a couple of years ago. No, I wouldn't think so. Anyway, we're going to take a break right now. We will come back. We're going to preview the second half of the Cubs uh, season, which gets underway tomorrow night in Atlanta, and there's going to be a new fresh face there uh, on the roster, um, and that's in part to a Miguel Montero injury, the emergence of Kyle Schwarber. He's now with the team because uh, Montero's going to be out for at least six weeks. It could be more than that. Oh, is it really six weeks? That's what I heard. It's going to be Ooh. six weeks. It could be longer. With uh, He has something wrong with his thumb, I think. Yeah, it was a thumb injury. Yeah, uh, so we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about the Cubs. You're listening to the Sports Renegades here on SportstownChicago.com. The Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com.